Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McCray. But Tracy, as we just discussed with neurosurgeon Dr. Kendall Lee, Mayo Clinic researchers have made a truly exciting breakthrough in the treatment of spinal cord injuries. Through electrical stimulation on an injured spinal cord and intense physical therapy, the first patient implanted with this device at Mayo Clinic is now strong enough to be able to stand and make movements that are resembling steps. The patient is actually able to exert some control over his legs again, legs that were completely paralyzed. The latest update on this research was recently published in Nature Medicine. We've heard about this exciting advancement from the neurosurgeon's perspective, but an equally important part is the role played by physical medicine and rehabilitation. And here to tell us about it is Dr. Kristen Zhao and Megan Gill. Dr. Zhao is the director of Mayo Clinic's Assistive and Restorative Technology Laboratory, and Megan is a physical therapist in Dr. Zhao's lab. Welcome both of you to the program. Thanks for Thank having you. us. Yeah, good to have you both. This must be exciting for both of you to, to work on this project. Who's most excited? <laughs> <laughs> I well, think Megan. <laughs> yeah, you know, being a clinician and having the experience of working with this population for 14, 15 years now, it's really exciting to be able to finally have something that we can tell our patients and our patients' families that we're making progress towards um, recovery for those who have such a devastating injury, such as a complete spinal cord injury. So it's it's really life changing for me as a professional, but also the experience to be able to tell our patients that there's hope on the horizon is really really amazing. Did you know for a while that this was coming? Something like this would ultimately become available. Yeah, I had been kind of following the literature um, that had been coming out from uh, the UCLA, uh, our collaborators from UCLA, as well as the University of Louisville. So I was aware of this type of intervention and what was available to the individuals with spinal cord injuries and what their outcomes were, which were really promising. But I think this paper and, and our, our results really kind of are a home run compared to where it started. And so, you know, we knew there was a possibility, but what was the level of ability and what was the level of recovery was really beyond my belief at that point. So it's really amazing to see the progress that we've made to this point. Anything to add, Dr. Zell? I guess I would like to just add that, I mean, I think it's exciting that, that we at Mayo get to have a team that, that is able to replicate this work and push it forward. And, and now we're really excited because we have this great team together and the possibilities are sort of endless now for what, for what we can do next. So, so what role does, does therapy play and rehabilitation play in this whole process? And, and how important is it? We know about the implant. We know about the stimulation. Um, but didn't this patient also have a significant amount of therapy before the implant was ever inserted? Yeah. So, so the part of the trial was for the first five to six months, we did physical therapy alone and just worked on the type of activities that were task specific to standing and stepping and balance training, which is what we continued with at, after the surgery. But we really wanted to do the physical therapy intensively just to find out what kind of recovery is possible with just the therapy alone. Um, this individual that um, we, we published in the, in the paper had very little physical therapy after his injury um, three years prior, other than the traditional conventional compensatory strategies. Um, so it wasn't to the level of what we introduced in the rehab um, program with this trial. So he did five to six months of intense therapy with, you know, maybe minor improvements in terms of his endurance and his conditioning, but no recovery below his level of injury. Well, so how do you, what sort of physical therapy do you do on someone whose legs are paralyzed? So our goal was to regain volitional activation and, and movement. Which means? Um, to be able to intently move their legs or activate their muscles. Okay. So you were trying to get him to be able to move something that wouldn't move. Correct. And, but you can Correct. do that? And we were, we're using strategies that we use with other individuals with neurologic conditions um, to try to engage the, the neuromuscular um, activity of the legs and the trunk by loading them and by going through the repetition of the flexion extension moments of the legs. So it's a standard of care that we typically follow for people who have some motor and sensory activation, but it's not the standard of care for people who have a complete paralysis injury such as these individuals. So you were trying to strengthen the muscles that you knew the patient would need to walk? Partially, yes. I remind you that when there's a spinal cord injury, there is no damage to the muscles. The damage is in the spinal cord. But so they the shrink, nerves. they atrophy. They atrophy, time. definitely. Sure. So our, our purpose was to try to send sensory information up through the nervous system by loading the legs and providing tactile cues and movements of the legs that can be sent up through the, to the central nervous system to then try to make the connection in the nerves to then send a motor output to the muscles. 
So does this type of therapy continue indefinitely for the patient? So we quickly realized that, you know, you can't have epidural electrical stimulation without physical therapy, we feel. They're both integral into this, this type of recovery. So we it, know it's really important. So you, you can put the implant in, but that it won't do any good if you don't have the therapy. We, that's our theory. Uh, that mm -hmm. has yet to be proven as well. But um, we know physical therapy itself wasn't the answer. So we had the implant and we added the therapy and the stimulation together and we got these miraculous results. Um, what goes on from here is a little tricky because number one, like I said, this is not the standard of care for someone who has a completely um, uh, severe spinal cord injury. So to be able to send this individual out to the clinic now without this standard of care would be tricky because our clinicians don't know how to manage the sure. stimulator in, in conjunction with the therapy, which we feel is really, really valuable. So we're at the point with this trial where we're really trying to integrate the home exercise program by identifying the activities that have been really proven safe and possible for the individuals to do on their own at home with some minimal assistive devices, and then let them do that stuff at home on their own. Um, and then, and then we, it's our job to figure out, you know, who is this appropriate? When is it appropriate? If it is appropriate and how do we implement it into a standard of care? So how many patients have had the stimulator now and are, are presently going through the therapy? And w what are the things that they're actually able to do that they couldn't do before? So we're on our second subject right now, our patients. So we've enrolled two. Um, we have some research funding to hopefully continue into a new protocol that will be very similar but will allow us to enroll additional subjects. Um, right now the subject, um, the first subject is able to, um, you know, stand alone for a long period of time. He's able to... Um, In wheelchair bound before? Yes. Wow. Um, he's able to walk um, or independently step on a treadmill and also over ground with a walker. So he has some assistance, obviously, to help him, you know, bear weight on his legs, but he's able to, um, as Megan described, volitionally move his legs when he wants, so on command. So that's really the exciting part is, is where, where we can go from here now. Does it improve bladder and bowel function for him? We've had some anecdotal improvements, although um, we didn't measure those things directly. So um, at this point, um, our next studies, we're going to do more um, data collections, which we hope will help inform whether there's actual return of, of bowel and bladder. Um, but they do report um, kind of a shorter bowel um, time, so that's a good thing. Um, we so just don't have evidence yet. So. You're working with a second patient. Mm -hmm. Is it very similar to what the first patient was, or are new, no two patients the same? <laughs> no two patients up. are the same, yeah. of course. <laughs> so we're seeing some differences, but this, overall, um, the progress is very similar. So how do we go from one or two individuals to millions? Because we know there mm -hmm. are somewhere between five and six million people out there who have spinal cord injuries, maybe not complete, but partial. Mm -hmm. where, how do we, where do we go from here? How can we get this technology for, <laughs> to more Three, people? four, five million. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so I think Megan alluded to this earlier, and we've probably both alluded to, you know, one thing we need is obviously to gain additional research support, money to do this work and to keep this team moving forward. But I think one of the other critical questions is, you know, which patients um, will respond to this therapy and which ones will not. So can we come up with a way of saying, you know, out of the millions of patients, you know, the, these people will respond and these won't so that we don't try to, you know, deliver a therapy that's not gonna be uh, successful. Finally, do you believe that someday paralysis won't be permanent for all patients? Mm -hmm. Well, we're definitely making a turn because we used to just talk about how do we compensate for the deficits that are existing for this population. And now mm -hmm. we're talking about how do we recover and how do we uh, make neuroplasticity occur in the central nervous system. So we're definitely making the change and the progress of how we're managing and dealing with spinal cord injuries, but there's still a lot of work to be done. Well, you've made so much progress so so far, and it's an exciting technology, and you've both done such great work, and we wish you the very best of luck. Thank you. Thank you. We've been talking about spinal cord stimulation and the role of rehabilitation with Dr. Christian Zhao from Mayo Clinic's Assistive and Restorative Technology Laboratory. That's an impressive name. <laughs> and Mayo Clinic Physical Therapist, Megan Gill, thanks so much for being with us. Thank, Thank you. you.